Okay, so we're going to go to the last chapter that we're going to cover. There is a <clears throat> uh, section here that will deal with development and pregnancy and a little bit of genetics. So development is increase in, it is in, in size, but it also are the chain, will involve the changes that people go through uh, as they after birth and and so um, it's kind of an all-encompassing term now in a couple other terms we have prenatal which is of course inside uh, between fertilization and birth that's basically inside your mother and then postnatal is after um, after you're born and then that goes all the way okay so the term fertilization or conception is when the secondary oocyte, which is the egg, and the sperm meet, and then the first cell is a zygote. Now this almost always takes place in the uterine tube. Um, <clears throat> as we just went over, the egg is usually, um, is, is always ovulated. Uh, during the middle of the cycle and then it enters the tube and then of course the sperm will swim into the tube and then fertile and then reach the egg okay at this point then we have the hormone uh, prostaglandins and that's found in the semen and that will get that sperm tail to thrash about and eventually um, <clears throat> we know that the estrogen causes the secretions in the uterus to be a lot more watery and then that would allow for the sperm to meet more easily with, with, uh, to swim through the, the tract. Okay. All right. So we also need to realize that only one sperm can fertilize the egg only one okay and that's kind of a, a, a critical uh, critical stage okay this is a good picture of some sperm on the surface of the egg but again only one will get to that egg. All right, so if you remember, in, around the head of the sperm was the acrosome. And so that contains enzymes, and as the different sperm are uh, beating on the surface, and that acrosome sort of, those enzymes are beating down on the surface around the egg, it starts to erode the corona radiata which surrounds the secondary oocyte. Okay, then the sperm bind to the zona uh, uh, pellucida, which directly surrounds the oocyte, and they start to digest the protein surrounding that egg. Okay, so the thing is, if you think about it, it's a bunch of sperm that work together but only one will get to penetrate uh, the egg surface, okay? And then what will happen is um, the uh, pellucida will harden once one uh, sperm gets in, so that stops the rest from getting in there, okay? And what ends up happening is the sperm cell will swell in the nucleus um, and it becomes the male pronucleus as you can see there secondary oocyte completes its meiotic second division and it becomes its nucleus becomes the female pronucleus and so when they unite that completes fertilization and we get that one cell called the zygote it sort of maps it and so we have to remember um, 
this journey, this pregnancy, is also known as uh, gestation. Okay, it starts with the G. I'm trying to write this without a mouse. Not very well. T. T. So it's gestation. Okay, lasts around 38 weeks. And we divide them into three three month periods called trimesters. Okay. Prenatal period will um, also be divided in the stages, and so we we have an embryonic stage, stage. Okay, so between fertilization and the and the eighth week, we are considered to be embryos. Okay, at this point, the placenta will form; its major organs will form. We'll start to see some external structures. Okay. Okay, so 30 hours after the zygote forms, there begins a period of mitotic divisions. Okay, this is called the cleavage stage. And then, then what will happen is um, we start to get some movement of the zygote down to the uterine tube. And again, we're going to have cells divide. So, um, the trip down the tube takes about three days, okay? And then, after several divisions, it's going to be called the marula, which is around 16 cells. So the marula will stay in the uterine cavity for three days, unattached to the uterus, okay? It starts to hollow out and um, becomes a hollow ball of cells called a blastocyst. It's the blastocyst that will implant into the in, uh, endometrium within that, you know, within that first week. At this point, the cells are pluripotent stem cells, which means they could, uh, you know, they, they're going to end up being different types of cells, but they are... They are definitely stem cells at that point. This kind of lays it out, this, this slide, in, a, in an easy-to-know read mat, matter, okay? All right. Now, as we know, the uh, blastocyst will develop into, in the second bullet here, a trophoblast, which becomes, you know, some of the structures for the supporting structures of the embryo. Okay. It'll send out some extensions called microvilli, which goes into the endometrium. When that happens, it results, uh, the endometrial will grow around the blastocyst, and then at that point, it's, impl it's implanting. And so we would call that pregnancy. Okay. The trophoblast secretes a hormone called HCG, human chorionic, chorionic gonadotropin, which will maintain the corpus luteum until the placenta is ready, and so it will be making the hormones. Okay, after the placenta develops, then it takes over. Um, with the hormones and exchange, make you know, make sure the the embryo is. Uh, <clears throat> I should say the fetus at this point. Make sure that it gets its nutrients and waste and what have you. Pregnancy tests detect HCG, so that's how one determines pregnant. Okay, and this is a key stage here. Okay. Um, so a couple of other things that we want to that we want to go over here. Um, there is um, a term called the chorion. That's the outermost embryonic membrane. And um, like I said, um, what's interesting about this is um, you know by the end of the fourth week, you know we've got this. 
you know, we've got this uh, villi that has already been absorbed, so to speak, by the endometrium where it surrounds it, okay? And then, of course, as we get later on, we get into the stage, okay? So, <clears throat> it forms from the chorion. Now we also have the amnion. The amnion starts to form in the second week and it has fluid and basically it's going to surround the little embryonic disc, uh, the inner cell mass, if you will, and this fluid uh, prevents compression of the embryo during development. It also maintains stable temperature and cushions movements. There will be an umbilical cord forming from the portions of the amnion, and, and then, of course, it will connect um, via, the, via the placenta, and that's the lifeline between the mother and the, uh, and the uh, developing embryo. And, that, and, of course, this is where we exchange all that. Okay, the yolk sac forms also during the second week and it produces blood cells and eventually it'll give rise to cells that will develop into the sex cells, but that's, that's what's producing the blood cells for the developing embryo. The allantose, if you remember that um, from say reptiles and amniotic eggs, that will form during the third week, and again, it's producing blood cells um, and umbilical uh, blood vessels. We know that the placenta then has really two parts, the embryonic part, which has the chorion and the chorionic villi, and the maternal part, which will, com will comprise parts of the uterine, uh, a little part of the uterine wall. And then the placental membrane is what separates the embryonic blood from the maternal blood. And so we get nutrients and oxygen, oxygen diffusing from the maternal blood into the embryonic blood. And then the wastes and CO2 diffuse from the embryonic blood to the mother's blood. So that's how the happens. Okay, and these are kind of a good view of how this all looks and how the development begins. Okay, so these are good tools to look at. Uh, from this, we've got some other terms. Uh, gastrulation is where we move cells from the disc of the embryo to form multiple layers. Now these multiple layers are going to be divided up into, we've got the ectoderm, outer layer, endoderm, inner layer, and then we when they fold, they'll form a mesoderm. So these are the three primary germ layers, okay? When the two week old embryo has all three primary layers, it is known as astrula, okay? Now, what does the ectoderm give rise to? Well, some sensory organs, the nervous system, of your epidermis and linings of the mouth and anal canal. The mesoderm is where the muscles and the skeletal tissue, bone marrow, you know, blood, lymphatic, internal reproductive organs, kidneys, connective tissues, and even epithelial lining. So the mesoderm is loaded up with future uh, structures that uh, all over the body. And then the endoderm is producing the digestive respiratory tract along with urinary bladder and urethra. Um, <clears throat> so what they give rise to. Here's a timeline of the names of the, uh, of the, uh, that we've used. Okay. And then, so as we are moving forward by the first month, um, the embryonic disc forms a neural tube and that's how we get the nervous system. 
The heart would be beating at this stage. The head and jaws are appearing and we get the little limb buds forming. During weeks five through seven, uh, the head is gonna be quickly growing and we get some facial features and our limbs elongate and we all, now we see some fingers and toes. The end of the seventh week, major internal organs have formed and by the end of the eighth week, we're ready to move into the fetal stage. And this is what um, it may look like. Here's an actual view of an embryo during its eighth week of development. Okay. The fetal stage goes from the eighth week all the way to birth. Okay, and so we're going to call this a fetus. There's a lot of growth going on. Um, everything's growing and um, obviously the limbs are growing to the relative size that they maintain throughout development. The bones start, are starting to harden and ossify. Okay, by the eighth or the twelfth week, we now know whether it's a male or a female as the external reproductive organs are um, distinguishable, okay? And again, during the fourth month, we get a lot, of, lot more of the uh, limb development and again, the skeleton. Fifth month, we start to get a little bit of a slowdown and there could be some movement felt by the mother hair starts to develop and um, during the sixth month fetus starts to gain quite a bit of weight eyebrows eyelids are forming okay in the seventh month we start to get some subcutaneous fat being deposited and the skin gets smoother eyelids will even open final trimester the brain cells are forming rapidly as you can see there, you know, are also growing. So at this stage, this is a full term fetus as it may be in a mother. Okay. Now in fetal blood circulation, um, we mentioned that there's, you know, substances diffuse across the placenta. Fetal blood has a 50% greater oxygen carrying capacity than the maternal blood, so it's got a great attraction that hemoglobin does. The umbilical vein transports the blood rich in oxygen and nutrients from the placenta to the fetus. Okay. Blood will then travel to the liver where half the blood is carried into the liver and half bypasses the liver through a structure known as the ductus venosus, okay? All right, so there is a mixture too at the bottom there and you can see that there'll be some mixture of rich blood. Okay, so after, after the baby is born, blood is transported from the right atrium to the right ventricle, pulmonary trunk, lungs, pick up the O2, we know this. But during fetal development, the lungs are non-functional and the blood bypasses the lung in two different ways by the foramen ovale, uh, ovale, pardon me, and uh, the ductus arteriosus, okay? And so that there's a picture of bypass. And it, this table here will go over some of the cardiovascular patients. Okay. All right. So <clears throat> maternal changes. Well, we know that the HCG. Uh, during pregnancy prevents the breakdown of the uterine lining and that would then prevent, in most cases, uh, miscarriages, okay? The HCG does function like luteinizing hormone in that it maintains the corpus luteum until the placenta is ready, thus secreting the estrogen and the progesterone, okay? Uh, HCG also inhibits the secretion of SS, FSH and LH to stop menstrual cycles. 
okay and HCG is peaking at two months and then the once the placenta then it takes over placenta also secretes a hormone known as placental lactogen and that's for breast development okay um, pl placental progesterone and relaxin which was secreted by the corpus luteum uh, suppresses the uterine contractions until the birth process okay <clears throat> and so some other changes during pregnancy the hormonal changes include uh, increased secretions of aldosterone which promotes fluid retention and parathyroid hormone which maintains high calcium levels so that's during pregnancy and this is a, a, a graph of during during pregnancy and a tape okay so <clears throat> during pregnancy it's progesterone which inhibits the uh, uterine contractions okay and uh, once the baby is ready then uh, to come out the prostaglandins promote the uterine con contractions cervix will thin and then open and then once the stretching of the uterus happens it'll stimulate the release of something that you're familiar with called oxytocin and oxytocin stimulates these uterine contractions and it it, re it works on positive feedback so the greater uh, the contraction as they start to happen the greater the release of oxytocin okay the abdominal muscles are going to be contracting and then once birth happens the placenta is expelled by continued uterine contractions and we call that of course the okay um, <clears throat> as you know that during pregnancy the mammary glands um, are being stimulated to develop and then following childbirth um, prolactin which was been inhibited it starts to kick in okay so mammary glands are stimulated by prolactin to produce milk about two to three days after childbirth before that milk is produced though there'll be a substance secreted by the mammary glands called colostrum it's thin but it contains a lot of protein a lot less fat but it also contains a key component the antibodies from the mother okay um, so there has to be a trigger for milk to flow and that is triggered by a the suckling of the, of the infant that's the milk ejection reflex and that will also cause oxytocin to be released okay and milk will be available as long as that continues okay okay so um, the neonatal period begins at birth and lasts for a month and they have to obviously breathe on their own get their nutrients etc excrete waste first breath is usually really forceful uh, to inflate the lungs for the first time and this is uh, made possible by a substance called surfactant which keeps the alveoli from collapsing uh, reduces the surface okay neonatal period um, we know that the newborn must live off of its fat st storage for the few days before the milk comes comes in okay we also know that the kidneys are not yet fully functioning um, trying to conserve water at this point we also have other things that are happening the umbilical vessels and ductus venosus um, constrict the foramen ovale closes the ductus arteriosus constricts so blood does not bypass the lungs keep that in mind and um, it may take up to a year for that foramen ovale to close okay
Okay, now throughout development, of course, um, aging occurs um, eventually, and we get all kinds of, of things that start to happen throughout our life. And um, you can read through that slide, nothing really. Um, active aging involves new activities and so um, what sometimes can happen is well what does happen is we do get um, this active aging process called apoptosis where we have pre-programmed cell death um, this actually occurs prior to, to birth, and so this prevents things like having six webbed uh, tissue in, in between your... In between your right? Genetically speaking, of course, this is how we get our traits, and we're not really going to go through a lot of this stuff we know that the female should be xx the male xy um and we you know have in the vicinity of you know around twenty thousand plus twenty one thousand plus genes and um uh, already sort of covered that and no need to go over this as well. So through that one, this is a karyotype of what the chromosomes may look like. Okay. Um, of course, you know that we have different modes of inheritance. There's recessive, and then there's sex-linked, and there's all kinds of different um, things that we've uh, that we've covered throughout. Uh, this, especially in biology one, um, sometimes parents are carriers, and that's that means they don't show the disease, but they can pass it on. One of those examples is cystic fibrosis, which is an autosomal trait, so it's it's not carried on the X chromosome. Okay, of course you can figure out. Um, we've done before two and then here's that difference between autosomal there's dominant which, and there's x-link recessive which is like hemophilia color blindness duchenne muscular dystrophy okay sometimes genes are traits are uh, transmitted through polygenic inheritance where there's multiple genes that are contributing to that trait Okay, things like skin color, hair color, height, etc. Okay. And that closes that out. So that's the last part of this. So I will load this up and then we'll be ready to rock and roll.